Thank you for choosing to view our video abstract on the paper Raman Spectroscopic Analysis of Fingernail Clippings Can Help Differentiate Between Postmenopausal Women Who Have and Have Not Suffered a Fracture. This work has been carried out as a collaboration across the UK and Ireland involving leading statisticians, academics and statistical experts. I'm Rennie Beatty, R&D Manager at Expert Ethics Limited and corresponding offer on this publication. I will be taking you through this introductory video to give you some insight into our publication. The lifetime risk of fracture for women in the UK is 1 in 3. The gold standard assessment of fracture risk is a bone mineral density. Only 1 in 3 women who sustained a fragility fracture were diagnosed as having a low bone mineral density. Most of the fractures were missed. Bone mineral density captures one aspect of bone resilience, hardness. The mineral is brittle and will shatter when impact is too strong. However, bone is a composite material where the mineral is integrated into a scaffold of collagen. Collagen is more flexible than mineral, allowing it to deform, therefore recover from an impact. Previous studies have demonstrated a relationship between bone health and the Raman signal of human nail. Fingernails are composed of another structural protein, keratin. Since there is an association, this suggests there is some systemic biochemical changes associated with fracture that also affect the proteins in the nail. The method we're using is Raman spectroscopy. This involves shining a single colour of light onto the nail. We then measure the changes in colour of the light scattered back from the sample. The colour shifts are related to the structure and composition of the nail. Here we see a typical Raman spectrum of human nail. The horizontal axis measures change in colour, while the vertical axis measures the intensity of light. A number of factors affect the exact profile you obtain for the Raman spectrum, including which amino acids are present in your sample. In addition, how these amino acids fold up to form local conformations, such as the alpha helix, also affects some of the bands in the spectrum. These peaks are further perturbed by how these conformations fold over in themselves in the third level of protein structure. Finally, some of the bands are affected by interaction between the different chains of protein. This gives information on the fourth level of protein structure. 633 postmenopausal women who were attending six fracture clinics across the UK and Ireland for a DEXA scan were recruited. They also completed a health questionnaire and provided a nail clipping. Samples collected from four centres were used to develop the tests, while those from the remaining two centres were held out and used to validate the processes. We tested each data source in isolation then we investigated the utility of combining the different types of data. Here we see the results for the individual data types. We can see that the Raman gave the best predictive ability with an area on the curve of 0.69. The receiver operator characteristics curves used to derive these values are on the right hand side. We can see that across the mid range, Raman is the highest of any line. This mid-range represents the best balance between correctly identifying people with fracture and correctly reassuring people who do not have a fracture. When we looked at combining data types, the Raman and the clinical data together gave a significantly improved prediction. The addition of DEXA to this did not improve the model any further. Comparing the Raman data with the other risk factors that we collected showed no sizable interactions. This shows that the Raman data is providing new independent information on fracture risk and explains why it combines so well with the other risk factors. How does it work? The Raman spectra show that non-fracture donors had a higher disulfide bond content, while in the fracture case there is a contribution from the reduced form cysteine. The disulfide bonds are critical in maintaining the structure of the protein. Alongside these changes, we see a transition from ordered local conformation to a disordered conformation. Taken together, these bits of evidence suggest that the keratin is becoming more disordered in patients at risk of fracture. 
In conclusion, our study shows that Raman spectroscopic measurement of a human fingernail is able to estimate fracture risk. It does this independently of DEXA and clinical risk factors, and so combining these sources of information creates an even more powerful model for predicting fracture risk. To build on this study, we plan to further validate the test in new populations, determine if the method can provide advanced prediction of fracture, and explore further the mechanism of action by using parallel measurements in nail and bone. If you have any further questions, please contact the authors using the contact details provided on the journal web pages. Thank you.